Welcome to Lily Winter's channel once again. I have the amazing pleasure of having here with me Geoffrey Giuliano, who is an American author and film actor who has appeared in the Squid Game series portraying VIP number four. I'm very happy to have him. So welcome Geoffrey to my channel. I hope you have a good time <laughs> and I'm thank you for agreeing to this interview. I'm already having a good time. It's a great pleasure. It's a real cool thing to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I have a few questions here, which are of my own and also for my followers too. So if you're okay with it, I'm going to start with the first one. And it says, how did you find about the Squid Game? How did you get to this series? Well, I've been an actor for many, many years. And recently, um, I've done three, well, fairly recently, I've done three very popular movies for Netflix, including uh, Squid Game, but the first two, one was called Kate with Woody Harrelson, a movie, and a far more important one was called Peninsula Train to Busan, where I played a, I played a mafia boss, which I played quite a bit, and um, the director saw those two, and they couldn't find anybody in Korea to uh cast in this role one it was a very big role it was cut down a little bit in the editing but it was a very big role it was the biggest role for any westerner in in the show any english speaker also you had to take your clothes off some people are weird about that but let me explain to you that if you're an actor a real actor you have to be and it's and it's appropriate to the project you have to be willing to do anything um, that doesn't mean you have sex with the producer. It means that as a professional actor, if it's appropriate for you to, you've got beautiful, and I knew this with an actor once who had beautiful long hair and he just didn't want to cut it. So that's an amateur actor. You know, you have to cut your hair, you have to take your clothes off, you have to do whatever you need to do, uh, which is appropriate to the project and moves, moves the movie forward. And is, is with it, I mean, you have your own personal will. But, you know, I looked at the situation, I assessed it, I felt it was relevant. And yeah, so I was able to do all those things because I'm a professional. So that's the first thing. He couldn't find anybody that he thought could do the acting and he couldn't find anyone that was willing to take their clothes off. You know, you're a lot more beautiful when you're uh, 38 or 28 than 68, which I am. But, you know, that, that wasn't uh, a character about beauty. In fact, it was a character about ugliness. So it was appropriate. So I, I was able to do that. So short answer is he couldn't find anyone else. They flew me in from Hollywood. I was just coming off the success of Peninsula and Kate, which was helpful. And I had no idea. And I will tell you that nobody, and I mean nobody, not the director, not Netflix, nobody had any concept whatsoever that this was going to be anything more than a marginally successful TV series. Nobody knew. Uh, I was paid triple my normal fee, which I found, you know, quizzical. I was, why did they do that? I would have done it for much less. I was happy to get the money. When I got there, I had a personal assistant. I had a, a car and a driver on call. I had a beautiful suite in, of apartments. I thought, wow, this is very luxurious. And then I got to the set, and the set was this uh, incredible looked like a stadium, a very, very multi-million dollar situation there. However, I later found out that the whole of Squid Game was made for just a little over two million U.S. dollars, and it grossed 950 million, which is just 50 million short, shy of a billion dollars. So that was, uh, uh, nobody could know that. Nobody, nobody could possibly know that. I, mean, I know that all those actors signed pretty much for cheap, even me, you know, now knowing what I know, I wouldn't have done it for that money um, and the other actors as well. Um, but, you know, we can't see into the future. We don't know. So that was a huge shock to everybody. Suddenly I was in this and am in this phenomenal thing that everybody 
continues to go crazy about. I did interviews from the day it was released, steady, night and day, two or three a day on average for three months. Now it's stopped now more or less. You're the first one in about a month. Um, I'm happy to do it, but you know, it was, it was just like hitting, it was like going swimming and a tsunami comes up to the beach and sweeps you away. Yeah, of course. I mean, I've heard that nobody thought it was going to be so popular. It became so, so famous. So, I mean, this has had to bring to bring great opportunities for you to open the doors for new opportunities, I'm well, sure. Yeah, I'll tell you what it did for me. It gave me incredible publicity. Magazine covers saying that I'm a global star, movie star, super talented, this and that. I have had no uh, offers for any movies. I haven't had any. I don't understand why that is. Let's let's look at it for a minute. First of all, I saw a document with a Netflix logo on it. I don't I didn't retain it, but I saw it and it it said there were 14 stars of Squid Game stars. I was number 14. So I was a star. I am a star of Squid Game. I had the biggest part of any English speaker. I'm a well-known American actor. Those other actors are really well-known in their country, not known at all in Hollywood. Uh, I sat in this chair and said to my wife, well, I guess I'll be working all the time now. I guess I'll get lots and lots of movies. Well, I haven't gotten any. I All I can think of is the, the onus, the energy was concentrated on the Korean cast members. And it, it just wasn't set up to kind of notice anybody else, even though I took my clothes off, even though I had a big part. The other VI, and another problem that happened was I was lumped in with the other VIPs. I don't know them. I met them on the set two minutes before they said action. They're local, what's called local hire, featured extras. An extra doesn't talk, a featured extra talks a little bit. So I don't know those guys. They were nice enough guys, I guess, but I don't like being lumped into them saying like the VIPs, like it's a rock band and we're all members of the VIPs. I'm not anything to do with those guys, you know? I was brought in for Hollywood uh, um, because they, they couldn't find anyone. None of the, all of those people auditioned for this role. But they, didn't, they didn't like any of them. Um, so they brought me in. Uh, so I think the bottom line is here, it was that project was never conceived or promoted or marketed to feature anybody that wasn't Korean. That's the first thing. The second thing was that somehow I got locked in with the other VIPs. So if somebody didn't like what the other VIPs were doing, that somehow came over, over on to me. Now, uh, if I were to come there and chase you around the room, you'd probably run away. When you, yeah. when, when you chase money, it kind of runs away. Uh, hmm. When you're as old as me, you understand that when you chase things, they kind of go. That's kind of a law of nature. So I don't, I don't I'm, a little, I'm a little surprised by it, but I'm not upset or anything like that. And I, you know, I've always had movies come to me. They've all come to me. People call me. And I haven't had a call yet. That's okay. And why? Well, because I own an audiobook company, which is uh, iconaudioarts.com. And I have 800 audiobooks that I've written, produced, and narrated. That's my full time job. Also, I'm an art dealer in London dealing in high end art. So I don't have any financial problems. But look, I'm an actor. I want to act. I play the bad guy always. I don't think you can find a better bad guy than me. So I do wonder why I'm not getting the calls, um, especially with Netflix, because I did three in a row for them. And uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, Squid Game was the most popular series ever. Kate was the most popular movie ever. So I was in both of those at the same time. But I just don't think they've stopped to take the time to notice anyone who doesn't speak Korean. Now, there is every chance that I will be in season two. I may be, I may not be. If they hire me to do that and the price is right and I have the time, I'll do it. Um, so 
It, the whole, every part of Squid Game is unexpected and a surprise, the, and the good and the bad and the and, and the in between. Yeah, I, I mean, you for sure deserve it because, you know, even though you you talk as if you were a part of the VIPs as a, gen, as a general group, but we for sure, I mean, I'm on social media a lot, and we for sure do remember your character. Like we make a distinction between your character and the other VIPs, especially because there is such a you know such a shocking scene. It's it's yeah. very difficult. It's very difficult to forget it. It's very it's very so, difficult to watch it. It's difficult to watch. <laughs> It was, it was difficult to make, but something funny happened there. I thought, oh boy, everybody's going to take screenshots of my 68 year old body. They're going to make fun of me. Listen, they're going to make fun of me. They're going to, you know, torture me. Nobody, nobody has mentioned, oh, you're so ugly. You're so fat. You're an old man. Nobody, I mean, maybe one or two people have said that. Um, but, but, uh, I thought that's what I was going to get. I didn't get any of that stuff. And I'll tell you why, because that, that movie was so crazy. It was so insane that it that was kind of normal. Something like that. It's not like it was in some sweet little movie. Um, and then all of a sudden some crazy man takes his clothes off and wants to have gay sex. It, it was kind of normal for that movie where people are getting blown up all over the place. But yeah, I was grateful that no one made, made fun of my body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that, you know, I personally think that sticking to just the body you see in, in the picture is just very superficial because this portrays, I mean, this scene and the show overall portrays such deep, deep emotions, deep twisted emotions in the characters. So I think that's what you have to focus on. And, you know, uh, I, I was going to ask you how you prepare for such a role. Like, what did you have to do? How do you inspire yourself to portray such a role? Well, I, I, I have a, okay, acting, a lot of acting goes on in your head, you know, unless you're Tom Cruise and you can bring in a whole group every day and we meet in a circle and we read through the script and, you know, we, we sit up and act it out and maybe we have a replica of the set in a warehouse, which is what movie stars do. Um, you have to kind of do it in your head and that's good, but it's mostly bad. So what I did, having this script, uh, script for several months, I memorized it over and over like, a, like a, um, at the sound of the tone, please le leave your name and number. This is Jeffrey, I can't pick up the phone right now. And it, was just, it became robotic and that's not a good way to do it because it doesn't, you get into a groove and then if anyone drops an ashtray or they say something that's not quite, quite what was written in the script, or a light makes a noise, you go, it, it, it breaks your concentration. So initially, an actor should learn this, the words robotically by repetition. Um, but what I've realized and what, well, what I forgot from my early training is once you learn the words, you have to get at least, at least one other human being and he needs to run the lines with you. Nobody's on a script. And then you got to get somebody in the corner to bang two pots together or to drop a glass or to slam a door or to blow a whistle so that you, you, your concentration will not be broken and you just keep going. Well, you know, uh, if you can satisfy me in, in five minutes, I'll change your life. Not what? What happened? You know? You can't, and this is, this yeah. is a very simple and important thing that I would, if I was working with young actors, I would train them. I've never seen anyone do that, but I know that's the way you do it. There was an expression in drama school, okay, let's get this thing on its feet. In other words, you got to take it from the cerebral, from the mental into the physical. So you get up and you, you could do anything. You could go wash the dishes and hey, you know, if you satisfy me in five minutes, I'll change your life. Whatever it is, just use the dialogue, but, uh, uh, do things around the house and, and, and maybe do the same thing, like a get up, go over there, open the refrigerator, take a drink of milk, say the first line, put the milk, close the refrigerator, walk over to the kitchen sink, do something there, say the next line, um, so that when you get on the set, I promise you this will happen. If you've just kept it all in your brain, in your head, in, you, in your little you, as soon as they ask you to walk across the room, you're going to forget your lines. 
You're not going to know where you are. You're not going to know your name. And you're certainly not going to be able to act. So you've got to, first of all, only in the beginning, learn it in your head. Uh, the second step is to get it on its feet. Go around the house, do something, move. And the third thing is to have concentration exercises where someone makes some sort of disruptive thing or shouts out, you're a crappy actor, or the house is on fire, whatever it is, so that you can just, just ignore it and keep going. And that's yeah. what I, that, let me finish, that's what I did not do. I kept it all in my head. Now, that's never going to happen to me again. The performance was fine. I'm happy with it. I've been doing this so long that it's not difficult for me. But uh, it could have been better if I would have trained in the proper way. Like if you're running the Olympics, you just don't think about You don't read books about running. You might. But at some point, you have to run, you know. So you have to get this thing into a human uh, situation for it to really stick to you. And that's the difference between theater and movies because in theater you rehearse everybody meets in for three hours a night or two hours a night and then it becomes easy for you but here they give you words on a piece of paper and say go do it and that's not the best way now i promise you the stars of the movie which i was you know i was technically but not really they got to have a, at least a read through where everybody sits around the table and reads the script together and they discuss it um, sometimes they get up, like in the case of the Godfather Part Three movie, and they had a set at the director Francis Ford Coppola's house, and they would, um, you know, do the actual things that are in the movie, and so they would rehearse. And Al Pacino says he likes. The interviewer said, "Would you like one month of rehearsal?" He said, "I'd really have rather have three or four. And so all actors want that, but unfortunately, movie making is such a money-oriented situation with such a large infrastructure of hundreds of people. Lighting people, sound people, camera people, that there's no time for that. You have to prepare on your own. But what I say to you and any young actor is you can't prepare alone in your head. So there was some, you know, whenever I, you're a young actress, when I talk to you guys, I like to give you some good advice. So there it is. Okay, thank you for that. I mean, it's a really interesting technique and it makes a lot of sense, you know, because yeah, it's true. Sometimes you get some distractions and you have to be to be prepared to deal with those and don't let them interrupt your work. So it's actually very good. When I, when I, when I, when I so I'm sorry, when I did, excuse me, when I did Peninsula, I said something and one of the girls sitting next to me said an ad lib that wasn't in the script. And I just went, what, what, what was that? And the guy said, oh, no, no, she ad-libbed. Oh, okay. So this is, I, I have a concentration problem, but I know how to fix it. It's just that, you know, I've been doing this since I was 12. I'm 68. And I've done a lot of other things in between in my life, families, traveling, writing books, all businesses. And I just forgot that you have to do, an actor must constantly prepare himself to have really great concentration. Yeah. And speaking of acting, I mean, was it hard? Was it difficult to work with a mask on to act yes. with a mask on? Yeah, especially yes. because other people around you had masks too. So yes, it was terrible. It was awful. I didn't know. They sent me a letter and they said, "How big are your eye slots?" But they didn't say I was going to wear a mask. I, I didn't know what that meant. So I just said half an inch. So that, but it's not half an inch. It's like an inch and a half. So when I got this mask on, it was like a little tiny slit I couldn't see. So the first scene, you'll see it, is all the VIPs walking down a big flight of stairs. But I, I refused to do it. I was at the top. Okay, VIP four, you come down first, real confident. Walk quickly down the stairs. Don't hold on to the handrail. And I said, um, I'm sorry, but I can't do that. What do you mean you can't do it? I, well, I don't feel it's safe. I can't see, you know, and, and, and I have new shoes on and you've got linoleum on the floor, which is very slippery and you don't want me to, and it's about 25 feet down if I fall and you don't want me to touch the handrails. So here's some more advice for actors. If you're ever on a movie set, as we saw with Alec Baldwin, recently with the shooting and somebody asks you to do something that you think is dangerous, you don't have to do it. Just say, I can't do that right now the way you've got it laid out. Let's work this out so it's safe 
or that I feel safe. So I, everybody was quite shocked. I said, no, I can't do that. And they, well, and they, they all had a meeting, they, they understood. So they had a meeting at the bottom of the stairs, the director and finally said, all right, you come downstairs and then we'll let the other guys that are willing to come down in the mask come down and then we'll cut to you as if you're with them. Where I, and that's my first line where I say, hey, hey, what, what? and then I use some profanity. Hey, what, what are you doing? You shouldn't do that. Are you crazy? Or whatever I said. I was already downstairs. But the way they tripped and cut the camera, it was like I was with those other guys. So it just showed those other guys walking. And then it cut to me with a close up. And it looked like I was with them. But I wasn't. I was at the very bottom of the stairs. So this is a really good chance we've had today to discuss kind of some things that actors should understand. I'll give you another one. I made a mistake in the dialogue. My first line was, well, no, my second line was, well, listen, I'll, uh, I'll, I don't mind giving anybody some slack, but you should understand that I'm a, a difficult man to please. I hope you won't disappoint me. Okay, giving people slack is incorrect. In English, we cut people slack. I said the wrong word. Now, listen, I'll cut anybody some slack. That's not a problem. Now, that was the way it should have been done. But I said, well, I'll give anybody some slack. and I don't mind doing that with anyone. Okay, now, if you look in the dictionary, cutting slack and giving slack are both correct. But what is colloquial, what is used is cuts. Hey, cut this. will you cut me some slack here? Nobody says, hey, will you give me some slack here? So I used the wrong word. Now, let me tell you what I didn't do that I should have done. Here's a trick that I'll give every actor. If you don't like the way the take is going, they won't stop it because it's money and time, and time is money. So you can stop it. How do you stop it without getting in trouble? Uh, you stop it like this. I don't mind get oh sorry I, I'm sorry I forgot what I was gonna say what do I say you can fake and lie that you forgot the line and then they have to stop and then you knowing what you're supposed to do can then go in and say well I don't mind cutting anybody some slack you know, then you can do it correctly so you the actor has the power to stop the take you can't use this trick too much or they'll get pissed off but certainly I should have used it there because it was like the second thing I said. And when I, I knew it was wrong, and if you watch it, you can see me hesitate a little bit when I bring my head up. So I, I'm, and I'm thinking, oh, fuck, why did I say that? I should have said cut, not give. So if you want to stop the take, that's the way you can do it, and that is a mistake that I made. So, so when I look at Squid Game, I'm not as happy with Squid Game as I am with Peninsula. If you really want to, any producers, anybody wants to judge me by my work, please look at Peninsula Train to Busan. I'm really happy with that. Tell you a quick story about that. I, I, I played a drug addict and a mafia boss. I knew that was what. So about a week before this, I was to go to Korea, I fell down out there by the swimming pool and I landed on my front teeth and they broke right off, all jagged. They're all broke, my front teeth. So I called the director, I said, listen, I've broken off my front teeth. I, I have time to get them fixed, which they are now. But I think it's better if I leave them broken off. And he said, oh, yeah, that's great for the character. So you see, a real actor has got to be prepared to look stupid, to look naked, to look fat, to have broken teeth, if it helps the part. Now, uh, I knew that that character was a drug addict. And what do drug addicts do? What is one of the first things that happen to them? They lose their teeth. Drug addicts don't have nice teeth. So he's, and, and I made sure I smiled, you know, I smiled a lot and so you could see these teeth. And when I got home, I, I went to India actually, and I got them all put in and you can't even tell. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's another example of the kind of, you gotta work, whatever is thrown at you, you have to be prepared to work with it. When I was in drama school, they used to give the example that if you get a call before you're going to go on stage that your mother and father and sisters have been killed, hit by a train. You don't say, okay, that's it. The play's over. I'm going to the hospital. You do the play, but you use that emotion. You channel that emotion into something that's appropriate for the character. Yeah.
makes so much sense. I mean, now that you were talking about the lines, you know, cutting some slack and giving some slack, um, I was wondering, because I heard you in another interview, that you mentioned that you would have wanted to add some lines to the script or modify some things. I'm really curious. I'm really curious what you, what you wanted to do. <laughs> okay, look, those lines were written. We have to call the director a genius because he made almost a billion dollars on his movie. We have to. Is he a genius? Yeah, I guess he is. I've never done anything like that. So he's really a genius. He gave me a job. There's a there's an old joke with actors. How do you make an actor complain? Give him a job. So you must never complain. Ah, this food is shit. They kept me one hour longer than they, the contract says I go at seven o'clock. It's eight o'clock. No, you can't do any of that shit. How many people want to be a movie star in this world? Millions. How many people get to be a movie star in this world? Almost nobody. If you get a chance to be a movie star, be grateful and shut up. All right? So that being said, those lines were written by a guy that doesn't speak English very well. And I, I speak English very well. So they weren't perfect. They just weren't perfect. They weren't how we talk. So I said, hey, we've got a little bit of time, half an hour. Can I change these lines a little bit so that they're more appropriately, correctly English? And they said no. Okay. Now, I have a line because I've worked a lot out of America. I've worked in Thailand. I've worked in Malaysia. I've worked in India. I won't do anything like, like let, let's say they, they ask me to say something that's grammatically incorrect. I won't do that. Because no one will ever, I'll be blamed forever that, oh, look at Jeffrey Giuliano doesn't know how to speak English. I won't do that. I draw the line. I will not say anything incorrect, grammatically wrong. But I guess I'll say stuff that isn't very well written if the production wants me to do that. If it's grammatical, if it, let's say not even isn't very well written, isn't written the way I would write it. You have to surrender. Look, I'm working for, I'm an employee. You know, if you work at McDonald's, you can't say, I don't think they should put pickles on that Big Mac. I don't think that's a good idea. We're going to, no, you can't do that. You're fired. You have to do what the director tells you to do. So I did ask if I could fix it, you know, fix it up, punch it up, sweeten it. They said no. So that was that. Would I have said, Hey, 69 is my favorite number. Or, hey, if you can't do 69, do 96. Would I have written that into a script? No. Do I think that was a really cool and funny thing to say? No. Has it caused me some problems because I said it? Yes. Do people blame me for writing the script even though I had nothing to do with it and had to say every word that they said? Yeah, I get blamed. People blame me for that script. Why did you say 69? Why are you talking about 69? I don't know, because they made me. My employer compelled me to do it. Or they would fire me and get somebody else. I'm not Tom Cruise. They can replace me. And believe me, they would. Now, the good thing is, is that down in Netflix town, wherever that is, in Hollywood, they got a great big pair of scissors. And if they don't like some actors acting, you know what they do? They get the scissors out and they cut it. And they could they could have cut me 99% out of that movie if, if they didn't like what I did. So Netflix liked it. The critics liked it. A few fans said, why did he say 69? And then the other thing some people said is, oh, he's too brash, you know? Well, come on. You've had three days or however long the series is of Korean people going, hi, whatever they're saying, in this low voice. And my first line is, hey, what are you guys doing over there? Hey, get out of here. It's, it's a cultural clash. But that was by design. That's the way it was designed by the people that made the movie. They wanted to have this big ass, some stupid America. Hey, I can't do 69. I'm going to do 96. It's like a cartoon. It wasn't, yeah. uh, it wasn't um, naturalistic acting, really. The most naturalistic acting in my part was when I sat down and I said, uh, sit down and have a drink. Well, if I do that, uh, they'll kill me. <laughs> if you don't do it, I'll kill you before I leave. That was sort of the way I act, naturalistic. But all that big, hey, that was, I was compelled to do that. And they would, you know, they tell you what to do. 
The director doesn't speak English, so he has what's called the first AD, first first assistant director, who's there with the with the communication. He's like, uh, Jeffrey, can you do that a little bit more, more like, hey, you know? And so you have to do it. And okay, that's good. So uh, yeah, Tom Cruise can decide. I don't like Tom Cruise. It's probably why I pick on him, but he's okay, I guess. But uh, look, he can do whatever he wants. He can say, I'm sorry, I don't like that line, <laughs> but I can't. Yeah, I've seen you know I've seen some comments that said that said um, this is how the rest of the world sees America like yeah. what they imagine like the culture they have in their minds it's just it's, a stereotypical approach I mean it's a, cari <laughs> it's a caricature it's a car yeah. it's a cartoonish portrayal of the archetypal American Donald Trump pig rich pig thug I'm yeah. not. That, but look, understand, some people got a little confused. They thought that that was me. That's not me. I've done Shakespeare. I've played women. I've done hundreds of different parts. Please don't confuse the part that I play with me, Jeffrey, the human being. It's got nothing to do with me. I said, in fact, when I went back to the hotel, it was, I just called my son and said, hi, what'd you have for dinner? You know, I'm a normal person. But on that thing, I'm a, a sex fiend. So this is, I think people that don't understand movies or maybe they're young or they, 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 con they do confuse you with the character. When I go, I went out to buy a cell phone the other day. And see, I don't think I'm famous. To me, I'm not famous. Apparently I am. I went out to buy a cell phone and someone went, V I P four. Hey, VIP 4, come on everybody, VIP 4 from Squid Game is over. <laughs> I have like, you know, 20 people, autograph, selfie. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, I, I don't want to be much more famous than this. It was it was very strange the way he looked at me. And he just, I, would, I didn't even, couldn't really quite, because he spoke Thai. I live in Bangkok. Couldn't quite understand what he, VIP, and he didn't quite say it right. Now, what, what? And then he said, P4? And then I knew, oh shit, I've been wrecked. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, even though, you know, we were talking about this being cartoonish somehow, but at the same time, maybe many people have found it interesting, the fact that, you know, maybe the VIPs were supposed to be these well-educated and formal men, but they were just laughing and making jokes while, while other people were dying. So I think that was pretty interesting <laughs> because, yeah, for them, it's, it was just a game. I mean, well, uh, we have it in real life. There are people like that. Although it was a cartoonish performing from an acting point of view, there are certainly people like that, like Vladimir Putin. I don't. I just saw. Some, I got something on my Facebook page that says uh, it's a picture of a family that was going down the uh, authorized evacuation route from Ukraine. They had two dogs, uh, two kids, and a mother, and they were just there on the pavement with their brains blew, blow, blown out. The sni the Russian snipers waited for them to go down the road that they were told to go down and then just kill that family. So, you know, do people laugh about it? Yeah, I think they do. So there are monsters in this world. There are people like the VIPs, but mostly uh, that, I would not call that naturalistic acting, but I would call my role in Peninsula Train to Busan definitely naturalistic acting, like Robert De Niro or Al Pacino or any of those people who are the people not of my generation. I'm younger than them, thanks God. They're 78, I'm 68. Not much difference. But those are the people that I modeled myself on. So, you know, sometimes the assignment, you know, one time I had to play a woman, like not a woman, a, a trans, transsexual, not transsexual, a, a drag queen. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah, I had to play a drag queen. I got the makeup and I got the breasts and my butt. And, uh, you know, I'm that's what you do. If you're a real actor, you can pretty much do anything. Yeah, can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. There is a phenomenon you see in Hollywood where lots of people just play themselves. You know, like um, the guy from Texas uh, who plays does those romantic comedies. Uh, he always plays himself. There, there's many actors, movie stars like this. Tom Cruise pretty much always plays himself. You know, you know it's always oh that's Tom Cruise. Anthony Hopkins does not, and the reason is. Anthony Hopkins is a character actor. He plays different characters. And I 
I'm a character actor. I play different characters, you know. Um, I've got some that are scary to watch. I played a Nazi once in a, something called 12 Good Years of a guy, a Nazi that was just a war criminal that was just about to be hung the next day. And if you watch that rehearsal tape, it's like, wow, this guy's the best actor in the world, or that isn't acting. That's just some video documentary of a guy that's about to be hung. So there's, you can cross over, not very often, you can cross over into a mystical experience with acting, where it's something other than acting. And I've done it, I can look at two movies that I've done that in, maybe three out of 28, where something magical happened and you cross over into this line of mysticism. Yeah. So now that we are talking about other characters you have acted, um, I mean, do you find any similarities to from this character to other characters you have portrayed? Or maybe you find it plainly different from the other ones? You mean what do I like to play? I don't think I understood oh, no. your question. I mean, you, you see this VIP4 character, is it different from other characters you have yeah. played? Or, yeah. or do yeah. you no, find no, it no. Okay. Normally, if you go to jeffreygiuliano.com and you go to a uh, cinema, you can see all my film clips, Scorpion King 3, uh, um, Mechanic Resurrection. You can see all, all the best clips. None of them are really the same, but there's a thread that goes through them, which is what I call naturalistic acting, which is like this, like, hey, how are you? Um, can I get... Um, I just think I have toast and, and tea. Thank you. Do you want anything else? No, no, that's, um, oh, you know what? Maybe some scrambled eggs. That's naturalistic acting. Okay. It's not like, well, scrambled eggs. Well, I'm not sure I like scrambled eggs. Hmm. Let me think for a minute. Toast. Oh yes. I'll have some toast, but make sure it's whole wheat. This is the, this is squid game. <laughs> it's kind of not that bad. But this is great. It's definitely a lot of what I see on, on Thai television. You know, um, the soap opera, when somebody gets mad, the woman gets mad and you go, hmm, well, hmm, I never, I'm certainly never going to talk to you again. You know, this kind of, what is that? What is that? What did you just do? So, no, look, there's different kinds of acting, you know, and a modern 20th century, 1970s movie era, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Robert Duvall, Godfather, naturalistic acting is just one of them. It's the best one, in my opinion, and it's the one I use most of the time. So uh, I was wondering because, uh, you know, this, this question is from one of, one of my followers and they wanted to know if the bridge scene and the VIP scene were actually filmed at the same time. No, no, was no, 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 no. We were just looking at a big empty nothing. They did show the bridge, the small bridge, you know, the little replica bridge uh, that they, and they took a, a cloth off of it and kind of went like that. And we were supposed to go, oh, and I think I said, what the hell is that? Something like that. I think that's what I said, but that's all we saw. We didn't, and I didn't know what it was. I couldn't imagine what it was. See, this is a big problem. I don't like this. They don't tell you what the hell's going on in the movie. So how can you, how much better could everybody have been if they said, okay, look guys, today we're doing this thing where you see this, there's a big thing where they fall off the bridge and people die if they don't. Do you understand? Any questions? Well, I have a question or ah, ah, I understand. They don't tell you that. I mean, just take a minute and tell people what's going on before and maybe what's going to come after. But I will tell you this about season two. You didn't ask, but I'll tell you. The director said he was going to use the people that were not killed. I wasn't killed. I was just knocked unconscious. In fact, the guy comes in and he says, is he dead? No, he's just unconscious. So they, I don't know why they said that. It made a big deal to point out that I was not killed. However, I haven't heard from anybody. But these things take a long time. This stupid crap that people think that they can make that in a year, you know, that's probably three, four years away. And obviously, if they call me, I'm not going to be, I don't think I'd be a star. So they're going to, uh, if I have to bet that are they going to call me for season two, I say they will not.
but it's kind of close. It's like 45% they will, 55% they won't. They certainly could because a lot of people liked me in that and who didn't like me remember me. I'm a very, very, very memorable guy from Squid Game. Uh, even if you don't know my name, I had someone say, hey, hey, hey you're, 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 you're that guy. You're the guy from Squid Game. They don't know my name. Did you take your clothes off in Squid Game? So everybody knows who that is. That's all you have to say. You know that old guy who took his clothes off? So, so that's, uh, I have a good chance of being in. And I'll tell you what, if I get in, I didn't quite happen with this one. But if I get in the next one, I will be a big movie star. No question about it. If they bring me back, I don't know if they will. And then I, I'll tell you something, I'm not sitting here by any means thinking, oh, will they call me? Will they put me in? You can't do that if you're an actor or you will kill yourself. You will kill yourself. It's like, I am not poor. I am not rich, but I'm comfortable. I'm okay. My son wants something. I said, well, just go get it. You know, he doesn't, well, can we afford it? No, he did, that doesn't come up. It's just, if you need it, go get it. He asked me for a calculator for school. Can I get a calculator? I said, what a stupid question. Of course, just go get it. Or can we order something to eat? Yes, we can. Or don't ask. Yes, we're, we're not that poor that we have to discuss whether or not we can order a pizza or go out to eat or whatever. So I'm comfortable. You know, I, would I rather be a millionaire? Yeah, sure. Who wouldn't? But if I don't get to be one, it's okay. Well, I do hope we see you on a Squid Game too. You know, I've seen the the episode, the, the VIPs episode, I've seen it like three times already, and I love it. You know, I really love your work, so I do hope we see you on a Squid Game too. It would be amazing. That's very so, kind of you. I, 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 I like me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I, wanted, I wanted to ask you a last question, if you allow me, and I wanted to know what's your general opinion on a Squid Game? I mean, have you watched the series once they were edited? And what's your favorite game? <laughs> I, I have not watched Squid Game. Oh. Okay. This will surprise people. Let me explain to you that actors pretty much, a lot of times they don't watch themselves, but almost never do they watch the movie. I watched me. And I watched me mostly so I could edit it and put a version of it on my website for other people to see. I did not watch Squid Game. Uh, I can't tell you anything about it. You know, I mean, I was I was on screen for 12 and a half minutes, um, which is quite a bit. It's quite a bit. And um, I didn't watch it. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> that that surprises you. Does that surprise you? Oh yeah, well maybe because some some actors don't want to watch their work after it's a deal. So well, I, I don't want to watch know. my work. I don't want to watch other people's work because oh, actors, yeah. act, actors have to have a healthy a healthy degree of narcissism. A healthy, <laughs> not like Donald Trump, but a healthy degree of egotism, narcissism in order to do this. Because act, what is acting? Hey, look at me! Look at me! Look what I can do! I can talk in a funny voice. I remember when I was 11 years old that I would, some kids came to see me at the front gate and they would say, hey, come on out. And I say, oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but Jeffrey's not here at the moment. Uh, um, oh, just a moment, he might be here. Uh, let me go in and see. And I'd run in and I'd come out and go, yeah, what do you want? Uh, you want to speak to Jeffrey? And nah, he's not here at the moment. Ah, just a moment, I go see if he's here. And I would come out and I would do all these different voices. So that's some abnormal shit. That is abnormal. Either you become an actor when you're 11 years old and you do that stuff, or you go to a, a crazy house, or both. So I want to tell you that acting at one level can be polished, but it can't be learned. It's like being gay, maybe. You're gay. That's it. Oh, okay, I'm gonna, it's Thursday. I'm going to stop being gay on Friday. You can't do that. You're gay, or you're black, or you're white, or you're short, or you're tall. You, that is something you are. I am, I'm sure there's people that don't fall into this category, but I'm a natural born actor. I did it for no reason to, with the neighbor kids. I used to have a broom 
and I used to pretend it was a microphone and go, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're here at uh, the sports, uh, sports, they're having a big race today. I'm your host. Uh, this is Mr. Jeffrey, and the cars are coming out. They're coming out of the field right now. I can see them coming. And there they go. You know, why am I doing this? You crazy? You know, I would go in the garage, and I would use a broom for a microphone and pretend I was doing a voiceover. And now I own a successful audiobook company where we have a studio back there, and I work in front of a microphone all day long. Here, let me show you the costume from Squid Game, because I'm the only one who has the costume. No other actor, not even the stars, have the costume. Here's the costume from Squid Game. Here's oh my what I God. Wore. And inside it says, hold on, it says, VIP, yeah, Jeffrey Giuliano. And on the other side, it says, Netflix. So this is a beautiful silk robe. It's lined in black silk, all handmade silk. There's the jacket. I'm the only one I had it. I was offered over $250,000 by a hotel in Las Vegas for this robe, and I did not sell it. It's absolutely luxurious. It looks so, so nice. Yeah, oh, it's got padded shoulders. It's, like it's not like a bathrobe. It's like a suit coat. It's got padded shoulders like a... Here, I'll put it on for him. I've never done this on any show. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm honored. <laughs> All right. And I haven't had it on since the movie. I don't walk around. I don't go to the grocery store. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> VIP4. Uh, I, don't, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the mask. I have a replica of the mask, but oh. it's a crappy one that everybody can get off Amazon. I did not get them. I could have had the mask. I had to buy this from the production. I had to buy this from the production. It's not, uh, it's, it's not, um, it wasn't free. I asked for it for a gift and they said yes. And then they said no. And then I had to pay them twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 for it something like that but it's like you can see the shoulders are padded it's like it's like a, a coat like a suit and um yeah it's really beautiful so many details in it the silk or the the, the lining is is black silk and it has the embroidery with my name in it and stuff i'm not sure the other people did i asked the other vips and they they didn't look inside so uh yeah i don't want to sell this i might you know there's somebody asked me would i donate it to a some kind of a maybe uh, American museum or so yeah maybe I would do something like that but I didn't I turned down money from the Bellagio Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas wanted to buy it and put it in the lobby for a quarter of a million dollars I said no so there you go <laughs> thank you thank you for that it's gonna be memorable <laughs> thank you a lot and thank you as well for agreeing to this interview i've had a really great time talking to you you are so interesting and such an amazing actor i wish you the best of all for your career and i hope we see you again in squid game too as i mentioned before can i can i mention that if people want to get in touch with me oh yeah it's sure. pretty easy to do you can go to jeffreygiuliano.com, G-E-O-F-F-R-E-Y-G-I-U-L-I-A-N-O.com. If you're interested in knowing about my audiobooks, you can go to iconaudiobooks.com, I-C-O-N-A-U-D-I, oh, I'm sorry, iconaudioarts.com, uh, uh, I-C-O-N-A-U-D-I-O-A-R-T-S.com. Um, if you want to like just actually talk to me, you can go on Facebook to VIP4's Squid Game Universe. There's a fan club somebody started. We have just under 500 people, and I go there every day pretty much. I'll post this there um, after you put it up. Um, and uh, yeah, so also if you would like if for work or anything, if you go to jeffreygiuliano.com, you go to the contact page, there's my email, my phone number and everything. So I'd love to hear from any of you. Unlike many actors in Hollywood, I'm happy to talk to people.
Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying anything against them. It's just that I'm no. quite more accessible than these other people. Yeah, you're, you're a very nice man. So <laughs> thank you again. Thank and, you. you know, people just follow him, get in touch with him. He's amazing. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so I much. Wish you, I wish you a great, great day. Thank you, sweetheart. Anytime. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye.